Okay, it's time for another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And this is going to be a one-off, or should I say a Cyrus one-off, because I found this amplifier just sitting there in the trash. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. going out and I happened to come across this so I thought I'd take it home and uh, see if there's anything wrong with it and if I can fix it up and whatever. It's absolutely filthy but that's not the only thing that's wrong with it because if we take a look inside you might be able to see a problem already. Can you see it yet? Okay, well, let me try to adjust the volume here, and then you might be able to see what's actually wrong. Look at that. Volume control is completely broken. That looks to use a 100k... No, sorry, that looks like a 10k potentiometer. Can't really read that good, because that's tiny writing, and it's upside down. And also... And also, both fuses are completely missing. There is no fuse in here whatsoever. And here, the fuse holder is completely gone. And someone's just put a piece of wire across it. So anyway, I think the first thing to do with this, in repairing this thing, is I'll replace this potentiometer, then I'll power it up, take some voltage measurements, make sure nothing lets out the magic smoke or anything like that, and um, if that all seems good, I'll... I'll connect it up to some speakers and a tape recorder or something and we'll see exactly how well it works. Right, so I'm going to pull all these things out. To get the front panel off, um, I might just as well unscrew this. Just get that out. There we go. Won't be needing this anymore. Let's see what that is. Yeah, it's a 10k. Now the only trouble is, I don't actually have any 10k logarithmic potentiometers that I can replace that with. Oh, that's still on there. Let's just get rid of that. But I do have a 50k logarithmic potentiometer, which might work. I mean, I know we might have a huge impedance mismatch there, but um, nothing much I can do about that. Or a 10k linear potentiometer. And linear is not really good for audio anyway, so I'm going to try it with that 50k. Okay, well, it's looking a little better now, and by a little better, I mean... I've replaced the volume potentiometer, and... a new fuse holder in. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, before I reattach this front panel, I'm going to power this up and test some voltages. I just did a quick measurement across there to make sure the fuse isn't blown and I got about 17 ohms, so that tells me the transformer is still connected and the fuse isn't blown. So I'll just plug this in. Oh, well, we have a light. Don't know if you can see that, but, yeah. Um, I don't know why my frame rate has gone all terrible, but still. Is it still recording? Yeah, okay, still recording. Okay, for some reason, when I hold this up, my frame rate drops like a... Drops like a stone. It's kind of weird. I didn't do it that time, but anyway. Because I can see it on the laptop screen that's recording. Let's see what we have across here. Okay, we've got negative 32 volts there. So that tells me the negative side of the rectifier is working. What have we got across here? Positive 32 volts. 
Okay, I think we might have a blown voltage regulator here. Which is this one right here. It's the positive voltage regulator. Now, if I measure the negative voltage regulator, voltage going into the negative voltage regulator is about minus 31.6, and out of it we're getting minus 18.06, which is obviously going to go and power some op amps and things like that, which I imagine are these chips here. I imagine most of those are op amps. However, the positive voltage regulator... If we measure what's going into it, and the pins are reversed on the positive, so, yeah. You can see we've got 31.5 volts going in, and coming out... 31.2! That is not what that's supposed to be! So I don't think this is doing its job. Well, my suspicions are correct. I do indeed have a dead voltage regulator, which is this one right here, which I've just pulled out of the thing. There is a complete dead short between pin 2, which is also connected to the uh, metal case of the thing there, so I can just put it on the metal case there, and pin 3. Doctor, he's gone. Okay, it's not a complete dead short, but it's close enough. So, I've ripped this one out of one of my other projects I'm not using anymore. I'm going to whack that in and see if that fixes the problem. I don't know what could have caused it to blow in the first place, but let's just see what happens. Well, okay, I've replaced the voltage regulator now, so let's see what voltages we're getting now. Right. So... Let's put my meter here, and we have 17.8 volts, which seems to be just about right. I hope that dead voltage regulator didn't kill any of these op amps. I imagine there was a op amps anyway. Well, only one way to find out. Let's test this thing. Well, good news. I mean, good news. It's working! Well, the left is working anyway, I haven't tested the right. That's working and sounds pretty good. I haven't tested the phono yet, but um, line input definitely seems to work. Okay, I'm going to test the phono input now. And I can't use the turntable's own cartridge because that's a ceramic cartridge and that would just completely overdrive the input of the amplifier because that's for a magnetic cartridge. So I've got this... Beg your pardon. I've got this magnetic cartridge here that I... Um, just found in my park spoon. Got a bit of a loose connection or something somewhere, but anyway. As this is a moving magnet cartridge, I've set the switch to moving magnet. I've got the uh, got it into the left input of the amplifier. I've got the speaker connected up to the left output. So now, and I already know this works because I've just tested it, but proof of the pudding. All right, so there's the left input. Now we'll go on. Oh. Look at that. I was trying to pull this thing off. And look what happened. The bloody thing's come apart. Well, okay. Now let's test the right, because, um, well... I think it's just better to test the channels individually. So I've got this hooked up to the right input, got the speaker hooked up, hooked up to the right output. 
So let's give this a listen. And I hope I really, I really hope I don't get screwed by the copyright police for this. But let's see. Alright, that's enough of that before they nab me. That's quite a miracle, actually. Despite the little op amps in there getting f over 30 volts on one supply rail, they survived. I don't hear any sign of distortion or any other nastiness in the sound, so um, I'm going to say this is a successful repair. So all I've got to do now is put this back together and I'll see you on the next Cool Dude Clones Electronic Workshop. So until next time, goodbye.